Good morning, everyone, and well, welcome to uh, this edition of this uh, today's podcast. I'm delighted to be joined here today by Enrico. Enrico, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Rory, and good morning, everyone. Uh, just for the sake of the audience, um, could you just give us a, a bit of overview of, of yourself and, and uh, uh, who you work for? Absolutely. So I am the uh, chairman and the founder of iGen, which is an industry trade association representing 27 of the larger companies that are based in, in Malta, operating on the international markets based in Malta. Great stuff. Now, obviously, uh, the news last week that we we heard with um, Malta being uh, grey listed, um, we've had a couple of days now to digest, um, obviously, um, uh, the implications. And uh, being that that trade body association, have you managed to talk to a number of your 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 members? What, what are their initial thoughts on 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 their reaction to to what's happened? Sure. Um, yes. So, of course, we've had um, uh, we've had some some time to. Kind of think about um, that. I mean, the first reaction, of course, uh, was a, a huge disappointment. Um, it was, I mean, it's a process that has uh, uh, started uh, two years ago when Malta failed the money bail assessment. Sure. Uh, so it's something that had been on our radar uh, for a while now. And we had been in uh, very close and regular contact with uh, the government to ensure that uh, uh, the appropriate actions were, were being taken uh, to avoid Malta being uh, grey listed. So the first uh, reaction was uh, uh, disappointment, of course. Uh, there was, uh, I would say, cautious optimism after Malta passed the uh, Moneyval assessment mm -hmm. just a few, a few uh, months ago. And that was, I think, testament to the uh, the work that uh, had been done by by the government uh, over these uh, uh, these last uh, couple of years, and especially this last last year. Um, but um, it was not enough, and I think the uh, the overall conclusion was that whilst the uh, the technical assessment, so the the theory, the um, the laws. Uh, the uh, the uh, investigative bodies, the FIU, the MJ, etc., were all strengthened. The uh, uh, the powers were separated. The number of uh, changes uh, were, were made to the legal framework to make it make it compliant uh, with the Manival um, requests. Uh, the the overarching or the uh, overarching decision, as, as we understand it, uh, is based on the enforcement, mm -hmm. which is then putting those laws in, in practice and making sure that uh, uh, that you do what you say you're, you're doing in, in your legal framework. Uh, and that's the part that uh, uh, where Malta has been found wanting. Yeah. And, and, and although this is like a, a wider financial issue, obviously, with, with FATF, it's obviously going to have implications to the, to the operators. Uh, with many of them, um, uh, operating, say, jurisdictions, and certainly as the US, or so with the US opening up, I mean, obviously that's quite an attractive market for a lot of them. Um, and, and we know from the land-based sector, the, the, the US market is quite vigilant in terms of um, um, sort of these checks and everything like that. Do, do you think it will it'll impact in any way at all, you know, in, in the first instance, with these operators having a Maltese license and probably other licenses as well? I mean, for sure, this will make it harder, as uh, we understand. Uh, so, so as part of our preparation, as part of the due diligence, if you want, it, we were doing, um, we we had uh, requested an impact analysis uh, that was done by by KPMG uh, on the various possible dynamics, and mm -hmm. uh, this one, which is to. Um, to, to, uh, to obtain um, licenses in other jurisdictions, including the US, uh, is one of the areas where we believe um, there will be increased scrutiny. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, uh, I, I think it's, it's inevitable that this will happen. Uh, there is going to be, there is a, a reputational damage mm -hmm. uh, and um, any, any business partner or regulatory body that will be uh, assessing you know companies that want to do business or obtain licenses from a gray listed jurisdiction um, will have to undergo some some stricter uh, due diligence this is what we expect um, 
Now, as, as again, as I understand, the areas where Malta has been found wanting um, did not relate to the online gambling sector. Uh, and if anything, that was one of the sectors that had been um, highlighted as green, as, as positive by the Monival assessment even back in 2019. So certainly when it comes to the, uh, the regulated online gambling industry in Malta, um, we, are, we are welcoming any, any type of uh, uh, due diligence requests that will come from regulators or, or other business partners. Mm. But of course, this will create more scrutiny, uh, we expect, will create um, more um, administrative work in the end, which will increase costs. Yeah, and I, and I suppose with that administrative work, obviously the 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 the, the tax incentives that Malta brings uh, at the moment, which is I think is about five percent. I mean, the industry's been around a long time, uh, certainly in the iGaming world, and obviously if we're talking about iGaming specifically, do you think the the movement from five to fifteen percent is going to really damage the iGaming industry, or are we resilient enough now to to actually accept that, and and we're not going to see an exodus of of companies um, to to other jurisdictions? So you know, in, in other words, Malta's pretty sound from the game perspective? I think, um, so So that is a, a whole other uh, conversation, I would say, a whole other um, to topic of conversation. Uh, the, the minimum global corporate tax, uh, as it's been reported, um, which is, the, you know, w is supposed to increase to a minimum of 15%, mm -hmm. Uh, is is something that um, uh, is is very unclear um, how that is going to affect um, you know the gaming companies for example or any other company in the world um, as I understand um, the way this was designed to start with uh, was was certainly to avoid the big companies the very big 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 uh, multinationals uh, from leveraging uh, the um, uh, the differences in, in uh, taxations um, amongst the various countries who are sovereign states, so they can they can impose, they can decide their own uh, taxation rate. Uh, and so, built big multinationals uh, where uh, where are leveraging this diversity in the tax structure, in the corporate structure, uh, tax structure, to minimize the tax that they are they are paying. Now, this has been widely seen as being unfair and unjust um, so there was talk about a minimum revenue before uh, this minimum uh, corporate tax global corporate tax would apply mm -hmm. so how malta will be impacted and how the individual i gaming companies will be impacted remains to be seen yeah um for sure if you know to, to answer your question i would say uh, at the moment it's it's too early to tell but there is no business that can that can uh, afford uh, a ten percent uh, increase in taxes. Let's sure. let's yeah. call it like that, um, without consequences. Uh, so so this will will definitely have um, some consequences should it happen in the way that you have uh, uh, phrased. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and you know uh, i suppose representing your mem the members in the in the i gaming world um you know uh, how long do you think in that in, in your opinion do you think um uh, malta will take to get back to being becoming a white listed country again is it going to be two years is it going to be five years or is it do you think with the regulation that, with the policies in place from the i gaming world so far um there's something that maybe they can learn from that and you know in terms of how vigilant we are uh, in, in that regard is it are you seeing it going to be resolved quite quickly or is, it, is this going to take a while in your opinion? Uh, it's of course a very a very difficult question uh, to answer. Um, I can I can look at um, uh, what the, um, uh, the the specific um, um, failings, let's say the technical failings uh, that the FATF has highlighted. Uh, so if you st go back, there were 58, let's say, non-compliant points mm -hmm. that Malta needed to address in 2019 mm -hmm. um, after the Moneyval report. Uh, and now we're left with three, uh, which are the enforcement ones, as we said. 
so, so one of them, for example, it relates to uh, ultimate beneficial owner, uh, and to make sure that there is uh, a process and there are uh, you know, there are penalties uh, that are proportionate uh, for Malta to keep. Uh, the, the record of who these companies really belong to up to date and when these uh, records are not uh, provided or there is lack of clarity then that there are the, the right um, penalties that would mm -hmm. go with with that mm -hmm. uh, for example and uh, to make sure that the FIU uh, fights in an effective way um, the, um, uh, the, the the money laundering and the tax avoidance. Uh, so all of these are, are very specific, very technical points that need to be addressed individually by the government and the respective bodies that are uh, that that are um, responsible for those those points. Um, now, how quickly this will be will be done, I don't know. There is certainly huge. Um, momentum, I would say, and and uh, uh, maybe a, something that I haven't seen in in the nine years that I have been in, in Malta, uh, kind of a national unity on on really getting the whole country back onto a white listing uh, status. So my hope is that this happens as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. If we look back at the recent future, uh, the recent past, uh, Iceland is a country that has gone through uh, through this similar journey yeah. and uh, they stayed in a grey listed status for 12 months for one year so i think that if we're going to be measuring this uh, this time um, with months let's say up to 12 months i think this would be uh, would be good uh, if we're talking about 2 to 5 years uh, that strikes me as a very long time to be in a grey listed status yeah. and that will have consequences uh, yeah. on the company's decision to, to stay, on you know, professionals, individuals to be wanting to continue to be based in a grey listed jurisdiction uh, and so on and so forth. So to conclude, I hope it will be a matter of months, let's say 6 mm. to 12 months, that's mm. kind of what my, my hope is. Um, and uh, um, you know, we will continue to be close to the government. Um, the government has been transparent uh, to, a, to a degree, and we would like to see greater transparency on the progress that these uh, individual task forces will, will need to, uh, you know, to, to do, uh, on the actions they will need to take in order to, to reach um, a, a pass mark, essentially. Um, and um, but if it drags on into into years, uh, I think we will start to see progressively. Um, the longer the time goes, the more negative effect this will have for Malta. Great, thank you. Um, any, anything else you wish to add, um, Enrico? I think um, you know. Whilst, of course, we we did not expect and we did not want to be in this uh, in this position, but I I do really believe that uh, once we get out of this and we are uh, whitelisted again i think malta will be a much stronger jurisdiction and mm -hmm. one where everybody will be proud to be based as companies as individuals um so so let, let's finish on this positive note yeah. um you know we will be in a better place uh, yeah. for sure yeah, no, they said the old old saying it makes you stronger. These le learning from these lessons. So, um, so listen, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it, and um, I hope to see you again soon in in person. And um, thank you so much. Look forward to that. Thank you, Rory. Yes. Bye.